Hi there folks. You know, it's been just over a year since I not only got heavily into the ever-enduring, wallet-demolishing, plastic-wrecking hobby of Gunpla, but got into it enough to build part of my internet persona's branding around it. And yet, I don't seem to come up with many opportunities to talk about it other than the occasional tweet and those two live streams I did. Well, that changes today. I am going to do rapid-fire reviews of every model kit I've ever built. Before we begin, an aside about my grading system. D means it's an unremarkable kit, C means it's a kit that's heavily flawed, B means it's a perfectly fine kit that I have no qualms with liking, A means it's a really good kit with some really minor flaws that are not worth fretting over, and S means that if you aren't building this kit then I don't know what you're doing with your life. At the risk of tempting fate, I have not yet built anything that goes below a D rank. However, those ratings primarily apply to the second of the two grades I give each kit. Before that, I've also included a grade that rates how much fun it was to actually build the kit, because, after all, that's a big part of the Gunpla experience, is it not? The higher the build grade, the more fun I had putting it together. Seems simple enough. I've also decided that since there's a whole different set of skills required to build and paint them, I'm not including the three airfix kits I built, as much as I enjoyed seeing those come together. Do bear in mind that at the end of the day, all of this is based on my own personal opinions and experiences, so if you feel like I'm raining on your parade with your choice of mobile suits, don't take it personally. With all that said, here is, in rough order of completion, all my completed model kits quickly reviewed. SDBB Unicorn Gundam. If you want a super deformed unicorn, get the SDBB over the rest of them. Aside from the master real and perfect grades, none of the other unicorns can transform, and the X standard version uses foil stickers for the psycho frame. High grade Gundam Zaraki L. A passable start to practicing clearing up dark blue nub marks and working on a kit that transforms. Just be careful not to mess up the backpack like I did on my first attempt, and you'll be fine. As a kit in and of itself though, this is just the poor man's H2 Magnum. High grade Blue Destiny Unit 3. The most boring looking kit in my collection. Even after applying the transparent stickers, it's still really boring. I literally only got this one because that's what Forbidden Planet had in stock at the time. I guarantee you the moment I finish looking at this thing, I'm gonna forget what it looks like. Real grade Astray Red Frame. Bit fiddly at first, particularly when you realize this is the era of pre-molded inner frame parts, but outside of an annoying part below the cockpit hatch that keeps coming off, it's not a bad intro to real grades. SD Sengoku Astray. The horns and the separate helmet-like part on the head make it worth a look, but I remember this more for experimenting using black panel lining on white. It looked fine, but odd. SD Double O Razor. The most space intensive super deformed I own and I cannot get mad at the cute little guy. High grade the origin Shah Zaku 2. Get this kit. Regardless of what skill level you're at with model kits of any brand, and regardless of the limitations of the high grade line, this Saku is so well designed it's worth every minute spent on it. Seriously, get this kit. High grade Gundam Sandrock. Carries the same unremarkable finish as the Blue Destiny, but stands out from it enough in basic visual design and weapons to make it a much better kit. Real grade Astray Gold Frame Amatsu Mina. Interesting shiny color scheme, but a fragile waist unit and some unfortunate balance problems with the backpack keep it from being higher. Decent kit, but get an action base. Real grade Unicorn Gundam. Far and away the best version of the Unicorn at a reasonable price. If you're not at all confident with getting the perfect grade or the master grade extreme, get the real grade. Zhu Yu Akatsuki. Looks nice when closely examined, but outside of the fiery backpack, the color scheme looks a bit samey. Real grade crossbone Gundam. Oh hey, it's the same balance problems as the Astray Gold Frame, but worse. I do however think that it's the better kit thanks to some cool effect parts and just being more fun to build. Again, good kit, but get an action base. Sima Yi Destiny Gundam. My favorite SD, solely because of the wings and the gauntlet. Real grade Unicorn Banshee Norn. It would be as positively received as its white and red equivalent were it not for this kit somehow feeling slightly more fragile than the Unicorn. Maybe it's just me, I guess, but there's always this one leg part that keeps coming off when I'm fiddling with the kit. It's still a good one otherwise. Master Grade The Origin RX-78 II. Obviously there are many versions of the Granddaddy Gundam out there, and I'm told the Origin one is supposed to be the best. Apart from the awkward mechanism for holding the beam sabers, I believe it. SD Musha Gundam Mark III. Not especially remarkable in the visual gimmick department besides the changeable eyes, but I found this little bugger charming enough to partly name myself after him, so you know, that's gotta count for something, right? High Grade Infinitism Marzen Kaiser. Holy crap, I don't even care that the leg articulation could be better or that the unfolded Kaiser Pilder is kind of pointless. This is a spectacular centerpiece to any collection, even if it is crying out for something more detailed than a high grade. High Grade Penelope. It's big and bulky and chicken-like and a joy to look at, even if it's a bit awkward to put the flight unit on. I mean, going off of how mine has the Odysseus Gundam's eyes obscured, I'm not entirely convinced I did it right. 
Master Grade Gundam Barbatos. Loses marks for how fragile I found one of the shoulder plate connectors to be, but if you like seeing working pistons and huge cannons, go for it. There really is no other protagonist Gundam quite like this one. Real Grade New Gundam. The only thing I could complain about is that assembling the funnels is obviously repetitive, but by god is it worth it. Bonus points if you got the version that includes the fin funnel effect set. Yeah, there's some balance issues too, but again, nothing an action base won't fix. Master Grade Gundam Epion. Spectacular kit, but be careful when breaking in the joints of the whip. Ignore this advice and you'd best be ready with the plastic glue. High Resolution God Gundam. Looks absolutely amazing. I'm not so keen on the finicky head and ankle armor, and the articulated thumbs are annoying to build. But if you want posability, it's well worth the price tag. Real Grade Sazabi. The best interpretation of my favorite mobile suit of all time. Be gentle with the shoulder joints and you'll be home free. Real Grade Ava Unit 1. It's a shame the entry plug won't fit in with the sticker attached and the progressive knives could do with the kind of detail one would expect from a Real Grade, but this is otherwise a great interpretation of an iconic mech. High Grade H2 Magnum. One of the greatest transforming kits out there as long as you don't lose the replacement leg joint used in the transformation sequence. Figure Rise Kamen Rider Luna Trigger. Even if you don't buy enough separate versions of the kit to use the swapping gimmick, there's still enough posability and fun little details to make it worth giving a go. Bit of a shame that mine came with the antenna slightly bent. High Grade Destiny Gundam. Cut out the wing effect parts just right and take in that there wingspan. Figure Rise Omega Mon. The chest pattern requires the use of a really fragile set of parts that go together in a very specific way lest they break. Trust me, it isn't fun. I also find the leg articulation to be kind of lacking, and don't even get me started on the stickers used for the sword. Pass. Kotobukiya Metal Gear Rex. I'm really not keen on how a few of the parts are so badly attached that they necessitated the need for glue in spite of the manual not giving any indication as far as I could tell, but other than that it's a wonderful chonky kit that just needs a lot of panel lining. High Grade Bjarlant Custom. I don't like a lot of the red inner stickers on this one, and this kit was really bad in terms of parts that have to be lined up precisely lest the connectors break, but if you're after a bulky swell high grade, eh, there are worse options out there. Reborn 100 Vignagina 2. I like the red and the shield effect part is nice, but it's otherwise a fairly plain kit dragged down by some seriously annoying stickers. Dear god, the one on the head. High Grade Gundam Gujion Rebake. If your berserk button involves big bulky folding color correcting stickers, stay away from this one. Otherwise, yeah, it's still better than the 1 100 version. High Grade Gundam Double X. I'm not even mad at the use of large stickers on this kit. I've something of a soft spot for big freaking island vaporizing lasers. Shame about the waist joint. SD Zero Maru. As cute as this thing is and as cool as it is in the anime it comes from, if you hate foil stickers and or lengthy parts formation sequences, this kit will be the death of you. Master Grade Ball Verkar. Ball is love, ball is life, we are not worthy of gazing on its spherical beauty. Master Grade Turn A Gundam. As much as I want to rate this one higher for all that unique Sid Mead goodness, there's some things about this kit like the easily losable chain connectors, the fragile chest hatch hinges, and the awkward to assemble articulated hands that just drive me up the wall. Still an alright kit, but as befitting a Master Grade that's this old, it's not one to go for if you're inexperienced with the Master Grade line or if you want a casual build out of the box. If any kit is crying out for Bandai to give it the Master Grade 2.0 treatment, it would be this one. Aoshima Mechagodzilla. The sheer size and solid feel of this kit pushes it into the S rank in spite of the repetitive tail assembly, the tough polycap joints, the flimsy water slide decals and the occasional misprint in the manual. Mechagodzilla is an iconic beast of a machine and I'd say in spite of Aoshima normally doing car models, I wouldn't mind them doing more mechs. Taisi Chi Dual Gundam. I'm sorry, what even are these shoulder stickers? Master Grade Infinite Justice Gundam. The color scheme took its time to grow on me, but correct application of the dry transfers makes for a sweet look regardless. Figure Eyes War Greymon Amplified. Far better than Omegamon. Not really one for articulation again, but even just standing there looking bored, this isn't a kit I overlook. Master Grade Musha Gundam Mark II. I only wish they stayed consistent with the undergating on the shiny gold parts. Those leg accents still have some unavoidable cut marks on them. Otherwise, eh, yeah, it's a beautiful kit. Master Grade XS Gundam version 2. Not a kit you'll miss if placed on your shelf, but even aside from the presence of old school Master Grade style screws, this kit's build is not one for the faint of heart. Especially those awkward head antennas. Master Grade Gundam Dynamez. I guess this one really pushes the double O line of Master Grades into the stratosphere. <laughs> 
Perfect Raid Unicorn Gundam. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people love this one, but the lighting kit is a nightmare to work with. And even if you weren't using it, I wish they didn't have that superfluous unchained mode. All it does is make the head build one of the least fun parts I've ever worked with, and all for the sake of a gimmicky secondary transformation that doesn't even appear anywhere in the anime. Or the novels, from what I gather. Beautiful once it's done, don't get me wrong, but kits like this are the reason I started rating the building experience separately from the completed kit. I don't care how I Iconic the unicorn is, please resist the temptation to make this one your first perfect grade. There are better ones out there. Plyobot Gurren Lagon. Aside from requiring plastic glue in places that the manual doesn't tell you about, I'd say these guys have done this mech justice. Bit of a missed opportunity that one of the face options requires painting though. Kotobukiya Blade Liger AB. Yeah, the boosters are awkward to put together, but I'm still shocked that a kit as old as this one is this good, especially considering how many highs and lows I hear are in Kotobukiya's back catalogue. I even had fun with the water slide decals, and they barely give you any instructions as to where to put them. Real Grade Gundam Mark II. Not so keen on how the bazooka barely fits into the storage slot on the back, and the fabric piping is really awkward during the inner frame assembly, as you might have seen if you saw me building this kit on my Twitch channel. I got to hope to god I don't lose these. I think... Ah, cr uh, First ever Gunpla livestream, and I come across a really awkward part. No, oh... Why did I have to start with a real grade? Ah, oh, Well, I just pinged out there and it's landed somewhere in my keyboard. But, yeah, I get it. The hype is real. Master Grade Wing Gundam Zero EW Verkar. Better than the Wing Zero EW's history with model kits will have you believe, but if you don't like water slides or just generally handling a kit covered in water slides, well, then I don't know what you're even doing picking up a Verkar kit, but this one especially will annoy you. High Grade Moon Gundam. Such a simple build, yet so much detail and color variety. There aren't even any eye stickers! If this is the next evolutionary step forward for high grades, I am all for it. Master Grade Gundam Double X. I guess it looks really nice, but the leg joints feel too awkward, and there's so much that falls off too easily in the process of handling it. So... Yeah, not much of a change from the high grade in terms of completed quality. High grade double O Sky Mobius. This kit is simple but sparkly and sweet in a way that really stands out on a shelf for a low, low price. Apart from the clear parts on the arms, I mean, anyone who's seen the Twitch stream will have seen me lose them midstream. But thankfully the one I lost did turn up after the stream ended, so, you know, there's that. Space Battleship Yamato 2202. Aside from the obligatory rant about how Bandai's blue LED units can go die in a fire, this was a pleasant change up to the usual shelf candy. I even got hold of Bandai's far superior white LED unit to light the engines up and I was impressed. Just be careful when fitting the smaller turrets, even if you don't lose them, those things bend easily. Perfect Grade Gundam Exia. Even with a weak hip joint, this thing was everything the Perfect Grade Unicorn wishes it was. Hell, apart from the upper arms, even the lighting kit was fun to work with. And that's just about everything. I know I have an unopened promotional Goku figure rise still to make, and there's still tons on my personal wish list for me to potentially get my hands on, so this is most likely not the last you'll see of this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you whenever.